Oh yeah. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> yeah, let's do more and more. <laughs> let's get this right in the right order. First the drink. First. No introductions. First the drinks. We yeah. We're drinking. We're drinking first. Yes, definitely. Drinking first. Definitely. I agree. Um, <laughs> Everybody who's watching, yeah. drink. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <That's okay. laughs> yeah. So welcome to Deep Fried Neurons, a chat where some nerds get together and talk about stuff and usually make things, but not this week. Not this week. Uh, not this week. Yeah. This week we decided to go um, a different direction because um, it didn't seem like the week to didn't it didn't seem like the time to just go about business as usual. Definitely not. And so. Uh, um, instead of talking about the project that we had ready to go, um, I think the mm -hmm. three of us uh, discussed whether or not we should just do a blog post with resources or actually talk about some of the resources about anti-racism that are out there. Personally, at least for me, some of it was given the imbalance in the tech world, maybe a way to like... <laughs> <laughs> Since there are like so few black people in the tech world to like save off the reflex that some people might have to go to their one black friend and tell them to like teach me. Um, yeah. Maybe we as white people could like run a little interference and talk about some of the resources <laughs> that we have. Uh, um, uh, yeah. It turns like, out all of this is not new. Voices. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Um, so anyway. Um, and I guess uh, I guess I'll start. Um, no, no. First, first wait, we gotta wait, talk about what we, we're drinking. Oh, that's we right. We have a we have we have an agenda, lady. There is an agenda. I'm the agenda lady. Before that, who are we? Who oh. are you? I don't know. I don't even know anymore. I'm supposed to be dismantling my identity as a white uh, person. Frozen. So like it's all gone. Oh no. So right, it's uh, name's Carlin. Um, I go with Carla oh, around on yeah. the handle. I make things, I do stuff. Um, yeah, that's me. I am drinking um, something called a grass skirt, which is uh, I found by um, this woman whose Twitter handle is at Drinking Coach. She's out of Atlanta. Um, <laughs> it's Rosemary Sprigs. Uh, honey syrup, which I didn't have, so I just used Excellent. honey, which is like not green and a drink with ice. There's a reason why they say honey syrup. Uh, ah, that's it. It's, it's like a less, less, it's less, a less viscous, viscous. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Lemon juice, uh, soda water, and vodka. And the vodka I picked is a local LA distillery Ooh. that is um, uh, uh, a black owned business. Um, and uh, all the really tasty. Nice. I mean, double double awesome because I love I love uh, local yeah. makers of things, be they bread or booze. <laughs> Wait, can you hold that bottle up again? I want to see oh, it. Yeah, it yeah, cool? yeah. Loft and bear, and their logo is super cute. Look at that logo. Oh, That's a standing bear. bear. <laughs> yeah, and it's um. I like the shape of the bottle. It's like bottle. that looks, yeah, that looks like it should be. Hey, that could be a terrarium, a little mini one. Oh gosh, gotcha. maybe it could be. Right? <laughs> yeah. Woo All right. I like it. Uh, I'm Barb. Cool. I'm Barb Noren. I'm Barb makes things on all of the things. Um, <clears throat> I am drinking wine. Uh, this is. A wine by uh, the McBride, uh, McBride sisters. It's called Black Girl Magic, Red Blend. Nice. They've got a number in this in this series. Um, this is also a black-owned uh, winery, uh, and it's pretty damn good. I'm enjoying it. Nice. I would get more. Uh, it's from 2016. Okay, here uh, a red blend has unique flavors of cherry, dark berries, and mocha with aromatic notes of cranberry and cocoa which I'm super into. Her story is kind of interesting too. Like, 
Yeah. They're like sisters who grew up on like different sides of the world and oh, wow. both were interested in wine. And then they met and they're like, oh, let's make a winery. <laughs> and now that's excellent. They have a winery and we're and I am drinking their wine. <laughs> as inconsequential as that is. Yeah. But me drinking it. Yeah. <laughs> Well, hi, I'm Todd, uh, Toddbot on the internets. Um, I'm just drinking a, mis a random Malbec from from what wines we had left. And I think it, I thought it was cheap because I'm a fan of cheap wines, but the smells kind of like dirty socks or something. So I think it might be a fancy wine. <laughs> 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 and that like you know maybe maybe i paid twenty dollars for it instead of like seven which is what i normally pay for wine so yeah. so this might actually be a fancy wine but i don't know if I'm, i don't know if i'm digging the whole like stinky stock smell that like some people <laughs> like in their wines <laughs> uh, so you're not a wine snob then <laughs> no no i'm a i'm a i want the wines that drink easy <laughs> yeah. yeah i'm i'm not a wine snob either i'm more of a beer snob mm -hmm. it's good from now and then now and then so. you have another drink that you might drink later oh yes carlin carlin got me a present uh, <laughs> along along with the uh with the loft and bear she also got uncle uncle nearest mm -hmm. 1856 right, let's, let's, let's zoom in Ooh, um, uncle nearest another another black owned uh booze maker um this is in tennessee i believe i think they're this is like from the original recipe from uh the whiskeys that came out of that all the out all of that came out from that region that were actually done by ex-slaves <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> that then other companies white owned companies kind of took, took over and are much more famously named now but um but yeah I'm 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 glad this exists, and I'm going to try it later after I uh, get some wine in me. I'm going to decide. <laughs> yeah. So you can mix things up exactly, in your belly. Cause, cause, that's another know, that's, cool that's... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We okay, found out about that from um, when was that gastropod episode? An episode of gastropod. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. Uh. That was uh oh January. That's it. Uh, it, was last, just, it was just uh, January, January, January 2019. I was about to say, like, this yeah. was that. I mean, I know. Yeah. <laughs> I've been meaning to get it, and this was a good um, excuse for me to buy the expensive with me now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We were also talking a little. Okay. So, like, Todd is into wine bottles that have screw tops. I think we saw, talked about that last time. Oh, yes. I just want to point out my cool bottle thing because this is not a screw top, but it goes. Yeah, that's. I think I might have to get get me one of those. Yeah, these are <laughs> these are pretty great. I kind of love it. It makes it so easy to close and open your booze. <laughs> um. <laughs> no, no, you open it and then you drink it all. <laughs> yeah, that's really the mood, isn't it? Like, yeah. You know, um, but but if you do close it, it's easy to open it again. Um, yes, that's true. So, so Todd, uh, you pick some yes. uh, anti racist resources. Do you want to? Sure. Yeah. Something? So, um, so from the really awesome. Uh, scaffold doc that you posted in the blog post mm -hmm. um which is a uh, i think i think you'll go you'll go into this more in detail but it's a it's a list of resources organized by essentially kind of where you are in your thinking about racism and how you as a white person fit into it are you gonna um, share yeah cast it let's see it oh uh share screen. <laughs> sure do you want me to do it do you want... no 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 here i can i can share share so that you can this happens uh, oh, don't do that. Um, all right, hold on. Here we go. Um, Matt's here. Wait, here we go. All right. Yeah, so, here we go. All right. <laughs> so, am I sharing this one here? Yeah. Hey, okay, cool. So, so this uh, scaffolded anti anti racist resources document 
it's a, it's a Google Doc. Anyone can look at it. Um, it's linked on the Crashbase blog post that Carlin put up, and um, and it's based off of this uh, this white identity development um, theory by this this uh, by this academic psychologist named Janet Helms back in like 1990, and she codified sort of the different mm. stages that we go through as white people sort of try to understand racism and then try to claim that they're not racist, which is tough because kind of, you know, we're by default, so like yeah. we can't not be. Um, and so there's things like, you know, like there's a sort of example phrases here, like I don't see color or I feel bad for being white. Um, how can I be white and anti-racist? And, and so all these things, right? And, and one of the things that, um, especially recently in the most, in the stuff that's been going on in the news lately, is this book, The End of Policing, um, really, uh, really made a dent with me. And can I, cat, can I just like change this? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so this is this book. It's a pretty short book. You can, you can read it pretty quickly. I'm, I just started it yesterday and I'm already like about maybe a third of the way halfway through it. And um, the cool thing about it is on the publisher's website right now, the uh, book is free. And wow. so please, everyone download this because it's full of references. It, it was published back in like 2017 and it was, it, it opens up with like the problems with like say Michael Brown, uh, cause that was the big, <laughs> that was the big uh, news item of, of the, the filmed uh, black guy getting killed by the cops. Um, and, but he, he has all these sources. He walks through about like, oh, here's all the things that police have been created for. Here's all the ways that people have talked about that can fix the police. And here's why almost all of those don't work because mm -hmm. the fundamental concept of police is kind of a flawed concept and that it was, it's made to, it's made to uphold the status quo. And when you have to have systemic changes, like say ending racism, these, these entities, the police become the arbiters of, keeping things the same. So they're kind of subconsciously told to make sure people stay racist via very, very subtle things. It could be just, you know, uh, making sure that poor neighborhoods stay mostly black. It could be that, um, like stop and frisk things where, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to, I have to stop, uh, like in, in New York, it was like hundred thousand people were stopped every year, at least some years it was like 300,000. And gee, what was the percentage of those that were non-white? Most of them, you know. And um, and back in the uh, '80s, an economist uh, came up with this idea called broken window theory, mm. which was a new way of doing policing. It was it was it was that uh, if you if you have small depredations to your community, oh, oh, Did or uh, oh, there we go. oh, what's that? Am I, am I still here? Uh, we lost you for a sec. Oh, okay. <laughs> if you have so, small, so, it's your community. So yes. Yeah, so, 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 so bro bro broken window theory was basically people doing small crimes will keep people from doing big crimes. So let's arrest everybody for doing small crimes like, uh, small time drug offenses, uh, driving with bad tags or whatever so like so and of course and, and, and of course these were focused in the poor areas because the philosophy or the the, the theory was that the, the broken window stuff only happens in poor neighborhoods and the reason why it only happens in poor neighborhoods is because the poors don't care enough to fix up their community and so and so it was just it was like this like just uh kind of typical 80s reagan era sort of stuff about let's accelerate the divide between the rich and the poor and who who ends up being told to be poor more um but non-white people and so this end of policing book kind of goes through with lots of lots of citations lots of stats backed up um by studies about how all these things have contributed to the current state of things and and proposes a couple different ways we can end this because right now we're depending on cops to do everything mm -hmm. we're pretending but we like not only are they uh you know catchers of crooks but they also are the community helpers and um just defenders of various 
uh, situations when why don't we have people that are counselors, people that are um, security guards for like sensitive areas or whatever. And it's like there's there's lots of different different groups that we could that we could have to fulfill the all the different roles of cops, and and that still doesn't even address the kind of the fundamental issue of a lot of these problems are the fact that we don't put any money into education and into counseling and all these other things that just sort of help to, to, to help people get out of being poor or mm. otherwise disenfranchised. And so it's, it's so I've been finding it a really, a really enlightening book. Um, and even though it's got a very provocative title, uh, I, I think it's actually realistic. A lot of things he's talking about. And so, cool. yeah, that was yeah. what I was looking at. Um, and uh, yeah, one, oh yeah, about the about the uh, about oh, oh the other thing is that this uh, this was an NPR recently, like just a couple like yesterday or whatever, two days ago. Uh, how much do we need police? And basically, it's an interview with the author on NPR, and um, and I found out I found out this by 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 N.K. Jemison, who's a sci-fi author, and uh, she said, "Amazing to see something like this in a major national publication. This is the power of protest, and the harder the police come at the protesters, the more people are going to consider this question of how much do we need police." And um, and that's just like yes, you know, it's like let's. I, th I think that, like people say what like, and I've often thought, hey, what's the good of protesting? And the fact that we're seeing articles like this in a major national publication is one of the examples of why protesting works. Um, the other thing that oh, I don't have it up anymore, I guess. Uh, this is the wine that. Um, yeah. <laughs> the wine. But let me let me bring up the other little little video link to sh just to show the title of it um so I, this... I i can relate to your tabs todd oh yeah <laughs> i totally relate to your tabs oh yeah, this is just one of many windows um yeah i know same <laughs> so <laughs> so so carlos maza uh used to be at vox he's now on his own and he just put out this video about how the media uh just the way they phrase things uh, this is both newspapers and and cable news how how they phrase things will change will uh makes you think that the cops are better than the non-cops because they they will phrase things like uh protesters hit a person and then tear gas was used on a protester like it's it's passive voice versus passive. active voice yeah. and and cop and cops and the cop bosses are used as the experts when they need to when they need to have somebody on camera talking about a situation because the city officials they have representatives that know how to look good on camera they've got the camera set up mm -hmm. um, whereas whereas most protesters are just people yeah you know, they don't really have have AV setups I mean I mean one of the nice things I'm hoping that come out of this whole this comes out of those this whole quarantine thing is that hey everyone's going to become really <laughs> um really conversant with av stuff and we're all going to look as good on camera as all these other talking heads <laughs> so that's uh that's basically the the, the things I, I was want to talk about which is which i think like there's a lot of systemic problems and i think one of the ways that the systemic problems really evidence themselves are the the cops like like the, the, like how we currently implement police and um how do i unshare my screen there we go <laughs> you're gonna need it again in a minute because you're gonna do your celebratory link because one of the oh, things right. you wanted to do was oh. because, like you know treating black people like misery porn like it's not great <laughs> um <laughs> and, and so we wanted to make sure that we yes, yes. celebratory link as well totally totally yeah like um oh dear uh, <laughs> <Yeah. we're> <laughs> Can't find it amongst one? all of your tabs. <laughs> is it this one? Is it this one? So is this? Is this? Wait, am I sharing it? Oh, oh I think you need oh, to. Oh, you need sorry. To... Yeah, no, I have to add it. Sorry. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. There you go. Oh, oh, uh, just just real quick, by the way. Um, turns out, uh, the study of how white people think about race uh -huh. has been 
has been a decades, like century long study by, of course, mostly black uh, psychologists and economists and stuff. This is this is the uh, the the model that that document, um, wherever it is, uh, this document here, the the scaffolded anti racist resources kind of based off of. Um, but anyway, so the uh, I'm sure you've heard of Afrofuturism, um, especially because of block because of uh, Black Panther, the, the movie. And there's this really great video from uh, uh, NPR storied that, that they have a series called It's Lit. It's usually about book type stuff. And um, this video is talking about all the cool sci-fi stuff that has come out of, mm -hmm. of, of, of Afrofuturism that started in books and is making its way to really broad public exposure, um, partly mm -hmm. like things like Black Panther. And, um, and one of the experts on this is this lady named Natasha Womack. And she gave this really cool talk about um, Imagination Humanity where she basically talks to a bunch of kids and asks them essentially sci-fi questions, the kind of questions that like, you know, we've often asked ourselves when we're little kids, like, oh man, what if we like go to different planets and go to, go to stars on a spaceship? You know, what, what's, what's that going to look like? And what would we do? And, and it, I mean, it, on the one hand, it's kind of sad that a lot of these little kids hadn't thought about that. Um, but, mm -hmm. but she was able to get them going and, and just to see their different take on sci-fi is really interesting and so so i it, it, it was like a really a little microcosm of the interesting way that afrofuturism sci-fi is different than like you know kind of the standard sci-fi that i've seen in, in in my readings of stuff and so all the like basically just just type just type afrofuturism into youtube and you'll find a bunch of really cool things talking about it these are like the two the two ones that i found the most and i think yeah so here's one of her books um Afrofuturism. And uh yeah, so so um her books are also full of awesome art and the mm. art is just so so just crazy organic. It's uh it's something that I'm really I'm really really keen into. So anyway, that's uh that's so cool. That's that's that. So yeah, I want to watch Black Panther. We've been slowly working through all the Marvel movies over the over the last month. I think we're about maybe a third of the way done. <laughs> <laughs> so eventually we'll get to the to the, to the Black Panther. <laughs> it takes a while. <laughs> it does. There is like over it a decade of long. movies. It is way too long. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. I've talked. To, I've talked too much. Um... <laughs> That's cool. I like that. Yeah. No, I got to check these things out. Yeah, we haven't discussed all of these things in advance. Uh, for oh, every all. one person watching, hi Matt. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> hey, we got a, we we got a viewer. <laughs> yeah, we have a viewer. Yay. <laughs> well, there are a lot of really more important voices to be listening to right now. So <laughs> that's, <true>. that's <laughs> fair. That's very fair. Uh, this is a you know we'll have it for posterity. Uh, yeah, I bet everybody's out protesting. Good. <laughs> There's that. Yeah, no, for sure. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. So shall I go next? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I'm gonna couch. Let's share a screen. No, let's go here. <clears throat> so I took a look at, um, or I went through uh, Campaign Zero, uh, which is um, that this website has. Um, there's all of these different policies. Um, and policy suggestions and tons of detail about all of them um, that uh, talk about, it's a little, it's a, I think actually a lot of the suggestions in here are very similar to uh, the book that Todd was talking about. Um, so, cause you've got here broken, win uh, broken windows policing, um, community oversight, limited use of force. Um, I'm trying to find, let's see. Well, and number 10, uh, fair police union contract. Yeah, for <laughs> sure. Yeah, so there's a lot of stuff. Which is the one that, uh, which is the one that I wanted to point out? I mean, so like for broken policing, ending um, the broken windows, uh, ending profiling and stopping and stop and frisk. Uh, and then also alternate approaches to mental health crises. Mm -hmm. Um, 
part of this one. Actually, let's pop back over there. <clears throat> then this, and like, it's a, it's a freaking nice website. It looks good. <laughs> it looks good. I appreciate good interface design. Like, like, totally. Yeah, totally yeah. yeah. When there's when there's so much information you have to take in, having something that yeah. gets a good deal. Well. Look good is yeah. <laughs> so, okay. So part of the thing for this, um, as you were saying, like police do too many different kinds of things that they are totally not trained for. Um, like compared to like they do far too little or far far less training than say the military who are trained in you know pretty ex fairly extensively in dealing with um, um, civilians and trying to avoid civilian casualties um, even though they're more often when they're in combat situations aiming to kill <clears throat> that makes it really important to be able to avoid hitting civilians um, so one of their suggestions. Uh, is having um, uh, CITs, like um, crisis intervention teams, mm -hmm. that work alongside the police and perform that kind of stuff. So it's people who are trained in this. This is it's social workers, it's crisis counselors, it's uh, mental health um, professionals, and have them going out and doing things that are not that don't need police. You know, with people who actually know how to deal with these situations. Um, and then an additional thing for this um, is on this website is that there's just a shit ton of research um, that they link to. Um, studies, examples of places that have, you know, applied this. And then there, you know, there's uh, some writings about it. Uh, data, all kinds of, all kinds of good stuff in here. And there's, you know, anywhere from half dozen to, you know, uh, a dozen sources usually on each of those. Uh, let's see, what else was around here? Yeah, so there's like lots, of, lots and lots of cool things on this. One, um, a lot of these things are obvious, like limiting use of force and banning chokeholds, having de-escalation techniques, which they don't get trained in anywhere near enough, um, having um, investigation and prosecution um, of like that is independent of police officers um, so that like all of these things are like kept track of to keep track of um, any use of force you know anytime your um, a gun is drawn or whatever I've got too many windows up right now what's going on okay <clears throat> additional things because like they don't just have like these suggestions they also have about you know how you can take action and they've got a nice pretty little way here of tracking the progress of legislation so you can see like all oh, of these nice. different things let me like remove some of these guys so i think yeah. there's um there's the crisis act actually mm -hmm. available now it's ab um i think it, it's on the it's on the crash it's on the blog post, um, the um, AB 2054 um, is, is uh, some of this. So we should all call our, call our folks. That's, that's another thing here, which you know, let's, 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 this pops up in the new window, which makes it a little bit trickier. So let's go mm -hmm. okay, training. Let's go California. <clears throat> uh, and then here I gotta change my what I'm sharing. Nope, come back. Wait, new what? But it <laughs> window that one. There we go. Yeah, the problem too yes. with windows it's hard to share. <laughs> you know. So um, you know, it talks about the uh, different bills that are mm -hmm. either in progress or passed. Um, in different states so you can check out things that are currently in legislation for it and then you can uh, enter your street address which i'm not going to do um but it'll show you it'll it'll be like okay here's your representative and here's all of their contact information and if you're on the phone here's like you can just push the button and call yeah. them for you um i'm like i'm like this is like a nice thing where it's like okay here's 
here are the things that we want to do. Here's what, you know, here's a, a nice interface of mm -hmm. um, what is being done, mm -hmm. what still needs to be done and in, in different, uh, different states. Mm -hmm. um, and then like, hey, you don't have to go hunt down information for your representative if you don't have them on speed dial. Uh, um, it's right here. That's great. Uh, which is pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Pretty well organized. Yeah. No, I was, I was enjoy. I, I, it, it was, it's very, I don't want to say enjoying because that's not the right word. It's, you're very supported in taking action. And I appreciate, sort of, yeah. Yeah. They're very supported and, and sort of like taken through the, the behaviors needed to actually take action. Yeah. And, you know, that's something that I generally feel about a lot of stuff. It's like, hey, let's see how we, you know, action can happen. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so let's see. I mean, another thing that I didn't mention, but I'll just say briefly, and I tweeted this, um, mm -hmm. that the uh, brown eyes, blue eyes exercise. That's so good. Jane Elliott. Oh yeah. Gosh. Jane Elliott. Um, what, what is this? Uh, I... She's also oh. the, the one, when you, when you told me, like, I'm sorry, but I really like this old lady teacher, Carlin. <laughs> oh yes, yes, yes. Yeah, me for Jane Elliott, which is like. Oh okay, yeah, yeah, she's awesome. She's, she's awesome. Like, I'm like okay, uh -huh. okay. Like I can't. I believe her. She's she's so take no shit. Yeah. She's like, I am gonna be a bitch today, and that's how it is, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah, she's great. Jane Elliott is amazing. Um, yeah. the, the, the one as a the brown eye blue eye experiment. Um, so, that was the one thing that I. Uh, but you also have um, which if anybody who's watching isn't aware, mm. if anybody who's watching isn't aware, um, it's an experiment where Jane Elliott took um, or takes. She does it often enough. Um, a group of usually kids, I think, either, and I say kids. I call college students kids. <laughs> sometimes college students, sometimes younger. Um, she might have done it with adults too. I don't know, um, but uh, separates them into different. Uh, ah, that doesn't matter. Cool. Uh, uh -huh. Separates them into different groups. Uh, says, okay, you have brown eyes. You're in this. Go into this room. You have blue eyes. You go into this room. Takes the brown eyed, uh, brown eyed people, and says, this is an experiment in in. Um, in, in, race, in racism and all of this. And we're going to, um, what we're gonna do is we're going to treat the blue eyed people when they come in uh, as they are, they are inferior and talks about ways of doing that. Um, like the kind of language to use, the kind of things to do in this situation um, to make these people feel inferior, make them feel less, make them, you know, um, and it's really interesting. So they bring them in and all of these people who being blue eyed and generally not being black um, or, you know, a minority all of a sudden are being exposed to this and are exceedingly, um, are very, very upset. So they don't take it well. <laughs> they do not take it well. Some take it better than others. Um, but like in the one that I watched, you know, like one, one girl walked, like was so upset about it. She walked out of the room, uh, and just left. Mm. And one of the things, you know, they're pointing out is like, okay, you can walk out of this experiment and things go back to the, um, you know, privileged way of your life. Black people can't walk out of that. Yep. It's, that's just yep. how it is. Yeah. Um, and so what, like, it's interesting seeing people learning about this. It's also, I found it interesting watching, uh, like all the minorities in the room, watching the situation and being like, mm -hmm. like yeah. having a, all, all kinds of different reactions to it. Like, wow, you're being, you're having quite a response to that. Like, that's normal. That's not <laughs> a weird that's thing at all. Why are you so <laughs> upset about it? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so like they might not have even, yeah. It, and then also kind of being like a bit, it feels like towards the end, some of them might've been a bit like, or like appreciating that somebody was showing 
other people this or making them feel it or understand it a little bit better. Maybe well, I can't. So, so, you, so like Jane for me is a white woman, and I think there's there's a degree to which I mean, and I've said had this conversation about feminism with people. It's like in feminism, like you kind of need the men to show up. Yeah. In the same way, in racism, you need the white people to show up. True. Mm -hmm. um, because it's like. Racism invented by white people for white people, mm -hmm. by white people. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I feel I, I feel we're getting a lot of that with people going like oh my god the cops are so mean it's like well that's because you're finally getting the cops paying attention to you like you were invisible to the cops before yeah. but you know but all these other non-white folks they weren't <laughs> yeah um it's it's well worth if you haven't if you haven't watched like you know like spend an hour and uh, and watch you know an extended version of one of the sessions. Yeah, that's that's also in the blog post, Todd. I think I sent you the link. Oh, good. Yes, I got it. Yeah, okay. and then she's got a lot of good resources on her web page as well, too. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then uh, so my my more upbeat thing actually, because um, we're emotions are high for everybody right now um uh for many different reasons um and self-care is important uh and so like i was thinking about in my own life excuse me um in my own life like what has been effective um kind of self-care stuff for me and music is a very is a very big thing for me uh and has been to different different degrees in my life, uh, but so I wanted to give a recommendation. Um, I, don't know if I have a link. Let me see. Um, one band that I have liked for quite some time is called Soul Live. It, oh, can I get out of this thing? Wait, close that. Now let me cast this. Window. There we go. So Soul Live um, is a trio. Um, there's uh, there's brothers Alan and Neil Evans on guitar or not on dr on drums and um, Hammond organ, and then there's an electric guitarist. Um, and they are just like super super freaking tight. Um, it's this kind of like jazz funk kind of retro modern thing. Uh, cool they mesh super super well uh and they're this is their debut album and i scrolled right out of it this is their debut album from like 2000 uh and this one is is like i love all their albums um this one is really highly um rated and for good reason it's good um called turn it out and i definitely recommend this um They've gone kind of a lot of directions. They're just they're just really freaking tight. They're they're good. Um, and I always find this particular kind of music in there specifically is kind of I call I call it balm for my soul. It's just it's good. And a lot of this is instrumental. Um, mm -hmm. uh, not all of it. They have like some really great um, vocalists who come in and, and join them for some of it. Um, <clears throat> Uh, but a lot of the instrumental stuff works really well with background music for when um, you're you, when you're working on stuff and you don't need the like I can't work with stuff that has vocals on it so like it works really yeah. nicely for that but That's it just cool. I find it good for self care personally um, nice. yeah so that's my thing so live check them out cool do you have a link. Are they uh, yeah. <laughs> hmm? So, so for me, I guess I will share it screen. I have this one. This one. Oh, sorry. I mean, uh, I have to do things. I have to pay attention. Oh, it's okay. It's, it's all good. It's good. So I like Todd. I really like um, the scaffolded document, and he already mentioned. It's really cool. Uh, yeah. It's really, I think, it's really effective because I think 
either whether if you're talking to yourself or to someone else, like these questions are what you hear and then like, so how do you address that? Um, and so I think this is really good. Something, some, there's some resources though that I like that aren't in it. So there's this um, book by Jason Reynolds and uh, Ibram Kendi who got, they got interviewed by um, Welcome, gentlemen, to The Daily Show. Uh, Thank you. Trevor on The Daily Show. And it's a really good book in terms of it presents sort of like a history of racism. And I think what's really amazing, and if you watch the video, it um, talks about like there was a first racist. And I think um, it was the biographer of um, Henry the Navigator, actually, uh, who oh, sort wow. of justified the Portuguese slave trade in Africans by like creating this idea that Africans were worth enslaving as a way mm -hmm. to make the Portuguese slave trade look better mm -hmm. to the eyes of the rest of Europe. And so the idea that if there's a first, if there's a first racist, there can be a <laughs> last racist. You know what I mean? Like I think yeah. that's sort of like a really powerful thought. There was a yeah. first, there can yeah. be a last. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's, I think that I think is really cool. And um, that's not the book I ended up getting. I ended we're, up getting- We're ways off from that. <laughs> yeah. Um, the book I ended up getting was How to Be an Anti-Racist. And I'm in the middle of reading that. And it's actually really good. And the whole Henry the Navigator um, biographer gets, get, um, gets raised. But it, it's, interestingly enough, it's a, uh, it's a really charitable book. Like this guy's really nice about it. Like, <laughs> and then he keeps like bringing up, like he keeps bringing up how like, you know, it started a long time ago, it's been around a long time, you've been swimming in it. Like it takes some unpacking. Um, yeah. And he admits to sort of feeling like he's been a racist because he talks about the difference between um, uh, being assimilationist, both white, liberals and black people who think, well, like if black people will treat us be more like white people want them to be, everything would be fine. Um, mm -hmm. segreg segregationists who are the classic racists, the way everybody thinks of them. And then and then now we, but there's this third option, which is the anti-racist, which is unpacking it all. Mm -hmm. So I'm, so I'm enjoying it. Enjoying is a tricky word. Um, I would also, uh, a book, one of the tricky parts about all these like book recommendations and link recommendations though is like, so for example, I bought Hood Feminist and pre-order. Um, oh, Hood Feminist, let's see if it's actually. Uh, Hood Feminism, excuse me. Um, by Mickey Kendall, like on pre-order, I have it. Oh, have I read it? No. Um, so this is the thing is like making sure that you actually show up for work. Um, you can't just buy the book, like write the list of recommendations. You have to show up, show up for work, um, and do, do go through the scaffolding, like examine these questions for yourself. To that end, um, on the blog post, um, I call that a specific section that was, um, about text role specifically for all of us tech people. There's a degree to which how um, the tech industry um, perpetuates racism, participates in white supremacy, and like what is our individual roles in it, how much of resources there. Um, an off-cited book is The Algorithms uh, of Oppression by Safiya Noble. She, there's actually a whole talk um, that you can watch of hers on that. Um, that link is also in the blog post. Um, so I think that's because that's you know what do we do to participate in this is the big is the big yeah. thing. Um, after the whole, can I can I sorry yeah. I don't want to interrupt you I just wanted to to no, point no, no. out like you were talking about um about about showing up to work like yeah. that you have to read books. Um, well, I mean. It's not only you have to read books, but it's sort of like you, you can't yeah. just buy the book. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, that was actually like, that was with the hashtag, like yeah. That was well. That was kind of my that's kind of my point. Is yeah. like um, you have to know um, find a way to uh, absorb it that'll work for you. Because like 
personally, I have a really hard time like visually reading a book. Yeah. Um, so like if that's a problem for you, if audiobooks work better, then like get the audiobook. Yeah. If yeah. um if you like if that's not gonna work better, find a find like a, a video resource or something for it. But like find a way to educate yourself that you will do. If you can read the book, then you know, read the book. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's um no finding video video like content and and and, and there nothing things. Oh by this this is actually um mm. This is actually one of the shocking mm. things about policing. Um, yep. This is three billion, three billion dollars, three billion, um, Boy. and it just blows everything out of. Completely yeah, for out of for like what, like seven thousand or no, nine thousand cops. Like LA has set has like nine thousand cops, and like three billion is going to that many people. It's just, it's, it's, it's like, nuts. I mean, it is partially yeah. symptomatic of all the things that we ask police to do that they are just yep. not qualified to do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Get people who are qualified, what are you saying? Get, get, get people who yeah. are qualified yeah, to like do it. Solve society with your baton, police yeah. officer. Like it's a ridiculous yeah. request um, and, and we need to unpack it. But we got there by, um, and this is one of the points in the how to be anti-racist book, is that um, uh, he makes this point with a biographer of Henry the Navigator. It wasn't that um, they had this racist policy of enslaving black people and then they made up racism so they could keep doing what they wanted to do without feeling bad about it. So there's this whole, racism is economically advantageous to certain populations. And as long as it's economically advantageous to certain populations, like it, it will be defended. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so unpacking that is, is, is tricky. Um, um, anyway, so, um, one of the things I really uh, enjoyed, so there was this incident, uh, People may or may not be aware <laughs> uh, at whatever future time that they are watching this. Um, uh, there was a black birder, um, Christian Cooper, who was in New York Central Park minding his own business uh, um, when this white lady decided to basically attempt, like, he told this white lady whose dog was not on a leash that she was in an area where her dog needed to be on a leash and she tried to murder him, basically, by calling the cops. Mm -hmm. um, and in support of him, uh, a effort was organized to create this thing called Black Birders on Twitter, Black Birders Week. Um, and it's just all these people who are bird watchers talking about the fact that they're bird watchers because it's frequently, much like in tech, um, mm -hmm. black birders are like the only one in the room, and so they can see each other. And it's so it's just so nice to see people like happy and in nature instead of um, the usual images of like sad and in the streets. Um, but it's like, it, it, you know, it's black life is not single dimensional and yeah. there are other modes. Um, and it's part of um, this other black in nature hashtag mm -hmm. is also around. Oh, and um, baby bird. That's okay. oh, that's awesome. and one of the clearing accounts that's, that's organizing a lot of this um, is uh, Black as Fucking STEM, which I think is <laughs> like a really great, unabashed thing. And, and so they, they are retweeting people who are amazing in lots of different fields and sort of showing different versions of people that, that maybe. It is a different media representation of black people than the current representation yeah. of black people get. And so um, uh, that's one that I thought was really, really great. And, um, and that was really. Yeah, that's awesome. Also happening on Twitter right now. <laughs> <laughs> and it's really nice to have that. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
I've been doom scrolling on Twitter as a way to stay informed because it does seem like right now social media, uh, while full of disinformation, is also full of information that isn't coming through on other channels. Um, and so it's been nice to have that interleaved um, all through. Yeah, if, if like one of the best things you can do for your Twitter state of mind is to create like lists and yeah. stuff and don't follow like the, the full timeline, don't look at trending, just create a curated list of good people and, and look at that. <laughs> well, but make sure when you create this list that you are including diverse voices. I mean, that well, it depends. It, it, I mean, it depends on what you want. Like, like, like I used to go to Twitter as a way of uh, connecting with friends I don't see in person very often and mm -hmm. seeing what they're up to. And, you know, it's become not that so much anymore. It's become all about doom scrolling. And mm -hmm. so being able to have a refuge sort of inside of Twitter, like a sub a subset of Twitter that is mm -hmm. back to that original feeling of like, oh, I just want to see what my friends are doing. You know, yeah, but, but it's also good, though, because, I mean, our, our circle can get kind of insular. Yeah. Um, anyway. Um, making sure there are lots of different things. Sometimes you just want to see your family. <laughs> I, I, I never know. Maybe. Sort of. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see. <laughs> uh, no, no, it's a, it's a. I mean, there's a. There's a catharsis in a weird catharsis in doom scrolling, in that it sort of lets you stay agitated and feel like you're doing something without actually, um, without actually doing it. You can yeah. sort of like feel like you're doing something without actually doing anything. Like while you're mm -hmm. still calling Twitter, you're not calling your Congress people. You're not actually reading thoughtfully crafted articles and books or videos. Um, yeah. You're not reaching out to neighbors and having hard conversations. Um, when you're doing scrolling, where it's been really important to me this week to get alternate perspectives, there's an amazing feed that this guy has aggregated. Like, 250 plus incidents of police violence. Um, I don't want to uh, like put them on the screen right now, um, oh. but like that, those aren't those aren't being cataloged anywhere else hmm. um, other than social media. But mm -hmm. um, which gets us to the point. If I share the screen again, I think. Um, there's a how not to burn out hmm. um, in the in the history of in the sort of line of um, of the Lord. Um, if you're going to participate in activism, you've got to know how to heal from the pain that you witness. Um, and participate in and feel yeah. and as you unpack your negative feelings and there are all sorts of mm -hmm. for that. that's not currently in the blog post i'll put it there yeah um there's also hilariously um these folks have created a discord uh used was called the white dudes hotline but they changed the white folks hotline um uh, as a discord channel that people can go to with your i guess with your stupid questions <laughs> Stay out of the way of the black people you know. Like, don't go to them. Like, teach me. <laughs> it just started. Um, it was suggested by a woman, Tatiana Mack, um, who made the the lists. Um, uh, Save your tears, directed a white woman and the white guy, guy to the galaxy. Um, <laughs> it was sort of like she suggested it, and this other guy came in and started like help organizing it. No idea if it's going to go anywhere. But I did like the idea yeah. of the sort of like, all right, let's corral ourselves into this like, like <laughs> about the real <laughs> uh, and um, uh, yeah, <laughs> and then oh, and then there's this course that this woman is running, um, 
But if you feel like you want something more structured, hmm. there's some, mm -hmm. um, something to do next. The point of all of this is that there are so many different ways yeah. to educate yourself. And here are lots of them. Yeah, yeah and it's sort of taken the same way, the same way, like in our usual I have your obnoxiousness would be like RTFM, can I Google that for you? Mm -hmm. Like there's a lot of stuff that's already <laughs> out there, like you don't need to know, like <laughs> Wait, does that mean we should yeah, make a so, we, the way that we should make a Unix man page for this? Race anti-racism, <laughs> like man anti-racism. Man anti-racism. Like, that would be like. That's not a man. Like that would be like a really. Uh, that would be a good place to put it in a Linux documentation. That would be a good place to put it. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. <laughs> that would be really, really. Um, so anyway. Uh, we've, uh, blathered on. Yeah. yeah. And like part of the, this is kind of, oh, wait. I think my internet's going weird. Did my internet get back? Okay. I can hear you. Yeah. I don't know if I'm back. I might be back. Am I back? Yeah, you're pretty mm -hmm. back. I don't know. You're still frozen. Okay, cool. I was saying, like, like having like this huge and go, especially if you're not well acquainted with stuff already, can be tough. So, like, that's because because it's like it's stuff that's super. It's angering. It's frustrating. It's like especially like yeah, having empathy for other people who are going through really really hard things is tough. So that's kind of part of the point of like self care is so that you can keep going. Mm -hmm. Totally. Like it's hard. Here's you know figure out how you can deal with it and then continue to educate yourself. You know. Yeah, and I think what who what is it is the um, the. For someone who did the circles of grief, I think it was, or the circles yeah. where you always you dump out, support in, dump out. What is that? Hmm. Um, I don't know. Let's see. Um, support in, dump out. Um, but it's, yeah, comfort in, ring theory. Ring theory. Ring theory, where you, if um, comfort in, dumped out like the aggrieved or afflicted versus out and as as white people we are not the aggrieved <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and so yeah. so making sure that when we do our self-care that we are dumping out um not on the yeah is, is tricky mm -hmm. yeah. fortunately we have Alcohol. Fortunately, a boo. Oh, yeah. I don't know <laughs> See the nice, the nice, easy remove uh, top. All right, I guess this is what we're doing. This is what we're doing. <laughs> it's got notes of cherries and cranberry and cocoa. I mean, like <laughs> having a whole bottle up here is still kind of smells like dirty feet. Oh dear. <laughs> mine, mine smells like black girl magic. So, yeah. so you're beginning the process of beginning mm. of, of anti racism. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Cheers. <All right>. Cheers. <laughs> Have a good night. <laughs> <laughs>